Hello everyone, Darren here, and on today's episode of WattC Academy, we are going to be talking about equipment, specifically powertrain and traction system, as I'm sure you've all acquired some tank at some point where you really think you should put one of these pieces of equipment on, but you were not sure which one was the best choice for that tank. So in this video, we will discuss what these pieces of equipment do, and when you should consider equipping them. So without further delay, let's get started. So, jumping right into the subject, if the tank seems sluggish, aka has a low power to weight ratio, and is slow to reach its top speed on flat ground, then you will want to equip the powertrain to get it up to its top speed faster. Combine this with the off-road driving skill to get the best possible performance. For reference to determine if your tank may be pretty sluggish, um, if a tank has a power to weight ratio below 13, that is pretty bad, with 14 to 18 being meh. Now, if the tank has a good power to weight ratio and it reaches its top speed quickly on flat ground, but it does not seem fast enough, then you will want to use the traction system. This equipment will also improve the tank's chassis and hull rotation speed. Now, that does explain you what the pieces of equipment do and what types of tanks you should put them on. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. So a good example for when to use powertrain would be the IS-7. It has a pretty nice top speed for a uh, heavy tank at 59.6 kilometers per hour, um, but it doesn't reach that speed quickly enough. However, if you equip the powertrain, a piece of equipment to this tank, we can see here that uh, in a very short amount of time, it reaches 40 kilometers per hour. And then, of course, if we didn't have all these tanks and varying terrain in the way, we would easily be able to get up to the 50 kilometers per hour much faster. But like we see, before we even get to the Great Wall, we have reached 50 kilometers per hour almost near our top speed. Now a good example for using traction system would be on a light tank like the T100. It's already pretty fast and gets to its top speed quickly, but let's say it's not fast enough for you. Then traction system is the way to go if you view bumping at speed as more important than other necessary pieces of equipment. I also would like to let you know that traction system benefits already fast tanks more than slower tanks as it is a percentage boost to a tank speed, not just a flat uh, speed boost. I also would like to let you know to keep in mind that ground resistance does play a role in a tank's ability to accelerate or reach its top speed. And any ground resistance stat on medium or hard terrain above 1.9 is not good. Now, I also want to mention that there are a couple rare exceptions where you may want to consider running both the traction system and the powertrain. The most notable example will be the American T-95 tank destroyer, as it, it's notorious for being very slow and very sluggish on basically every terrain. Um, however, that decision falls on you and how you want to play that tank, or anything else that is very similar to the T-95. That does it for today's video. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe. But until next time, this has been Darren of Watsy Academy.